bands have gone through. So I'll, I'll let you lead with those because you were already mentioning how you like these bands much better than the last time you were here. So how do you lead that off? Um, I think Morgana is is a must ban against a lot of champions just because she can shut them down pretty hard. Like right now they have an Annie, what looks like uh, top. It is, yes. So, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't matter where Annie is. Morgana can just stop the Annie stuns with Black Shield. Or... Um, Morgana will just destroy Udyr because Udyr will never get close to anyone. So there's just a lot of champions that Morgana shuts down. Lucian has insane mobility right now, and I think that makes him a good ban. Yasuo is Yasuo. I think that's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. Um, just because he has so much late-game scaling that it's insane. And, and the same goes for Kale and Kassadin. I think Nasus is an unnecessary ban just because... He's a lot easier to shut down in lane than, say, Kale or Cassidy, who have similar late game skills. But I can understand the reaction people have to Nasus because you see that late game four item Nasus and you're like, well, I guess we should have banned Nasus. Mm -hmm. About once a week, I, I stop banning Yasuo for a couple games. Just kind of like, then, oh, there's yeah. better bans, there's better bans. And then I, I get about 10 minutes into the game, I'm like, why the fuck didn't we ban, ban Yasuo? Exactly. Like, Wait a second. No, I didn't ban Yasuo. <laughs> Um, Every single time, it's like, oh, but I'm more worried about whatever the situational pick at that point is, exactly. whether it's like Maokai top or or something where it's like, I've seen it the last couple of games, and because it's rare enough, I don't ban it, so maybe I'll start taking care of it now. And that's like, well, what what am I giving up to ban that, right? I kind of feel that way about Kazadin too. Every time I don't ban Kazadin, I'm like, it's not going to be a big deal. I'll play Jarvan, and like everyone's picked, and they last pick Kazadin. I'm like, wait, 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 who didn't? Oh, that was me. Oops. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen the matchup. I ran into it the other day, and it was hilariously fun. Yi mid versus Kassadin. I'm unsurprised. AD champions with any ranged poke tend to be pretty good, because his shields are magic damage only, right? For sure, but the, the reason they were picking it is that if Kassadin ever tries to engage onto you, you can auto-attack him. If you're in a favorable trade, let's say it's a, a gank or a team fight or whatever it is, you can follow through the rift walk with your, with your alpha strike. Whoa. And then Did after that, you two-shot him. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good counter. I, I, I um, heard about it on the forums a couple times, and it was always one of those things where it's like, yeah, but there's better picks, and everyone was sort of going back and forth on it. But I saw it in Diamond 1 the other day, and I was like, I wonder if it's going to work. And sure enough, Yi just went crazy on him, and every single fight, Kassin could never join, because if he tried to, to jump in, he's dead. If he kites around the outside of the fight, Yi's going to engage and follow through the Rift Walk and still kill him. To be fair, I feel like anyone who plays Master Yi in lane in Diamond 1 has got to be pretty good. <laughs> oh, it, it was kind of terrifying. Every single skill where it was just like, even if it wasn't going to kill him, it was just like, it just boom, right 0.5 here. seconds of a heal to block out the damage, and it was just like, oh god, this right. is terrifying. I never want to play versus that guy. Um, so looking at the champions, I actually don't know how to rate the Annie matchup, because I've never seen Annie top, but she's it, got a lot of range. It might be because they're watching my stream. And it's not, it's not something I do, but every, I want to say three or four days, I run into a game where we have an any top, and every single time I doubt it, and then it wins the game. They, they know. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's the case. I just know that they, they did recently subscribe to me, so it's possible that they, they were around for those games. That's One of my friends actually plays a lot of any top, and every single game he just goes in insanely, insanely high KDA, where um, I believe it, he maxes out E first versus melee opponents. And then just harass them if you ever want to fight me, I'll have crazy armor. Hmm. And mages are pretty strong top right now, too, just because of the scaling they bring. Mm -hmm. And so. with Annie, you have the, the refunded mana on Q. So if you really want, you can just shove in pretty easily or farm pretty easily without mana concerns. Cinder versus Zed, I think, is a skill matchup. Uh, if Zed can use his ultimate to dodge Cinder's ultimate, he obviously wins. But if he can't, Cinder just has straight up more burst damage than Zed. So, and then Syndra has a lot of ranged poke in lanes. That seems like a problem to me. Mm -hmm. I feel um, like we had this Syndra in a workshop before, and she did really, really well versus a Zed. And in that matchup, I was pretty much just commenting that if you want this to work, you have to trust yourself to land your, land your skills. You can't rush them, because as soon exactly. as you waste, let's say, your stun, Zed's free to kill you. And, but if you wait, let's say he jumps in with Shadow Form, or he jumps in with all, whatever, whatever his engaged decision is, you then can you then follow up with a quick Q, knock back, throw the ball back on top, Q again, alt. Once you have a bit of CDR, that's enough damage to just one-shot him, pretty much. 
Um, the the mid for my team actually is a like is a Syndra only player, and basically, if you watch the way he plays, he plays entirely reactively. And I think until that's how he, he should be played. Until he knows that he can insta burst the target. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah, exactly, because she's got no mobility and only the the stun to disengage. Um, I'm normally super skeptical of Udir and or Trundle as junglers, but against each other, they kind of offset each other's weaknesses, that weakness being they just have to go kind of run at people. Mm -hmm. um, I think Trundle gets the advantage because Pillar is actually insanely strong against Udir. It definitely would be to lock him in place. Um, and if he uses it well, he can cancel out Caitlyn Nats. Exactly, it's... the. Um, now, I, I would almost wish to see that that Nami switched around to the other team. I don't like Leona with Jinx as much, only because if Jinx falls behind, she wants to go back into like a, a poke, farm, scale up sort of a mode. And Leona doesn't have that option, really. She doesn't have that option, yeah. And with the Nami on the other side, it works really well, well with, with Jinx because of just throwing the E on her, using the rocket spam, using the, the minigun spam, whatever her decision for engage is. So you have that extra poke potential, you have the extra burst potential, but then you also have the, the counter to that Uder running straight at your face. Right. Right? Traps are going to have to be really, really well timed to, to stop the Uder's approach, but a quick Nami tidal wave, boom, it's done. Right? And then you can follow up with all, you can follow up with, uh, sorry, you can follow up with bubble or exhaust or whatever you need to do. Um, that being said, Nami Caitlyn does work just as well. I just, I, I always question the Leona picks on champions who don't necessarily want to hard engage. Every time I see a Leona Caitlyn, like, what are you doing? Caitlyn doesn't have the burst to follow up your hard engage, right? Yeah. I mean, it can work. I just don't think it's ideal. I think Leona's a r relatively situational pick. You want her with someone pretty bursty and and pretty self, like, uh, you know, safe on their own. Mm -hmm. um, as far as late game, this should go into a split push comp because it's a Jax, obviously. The Jax would teleport, of all things. And I think the only person they have that can split push against that Jax is probably going to be Zed. Um, and given that Syndra has low mobility, if, if I were the Udyr at least, the way I would see this game is my job would be to camp Syndra so that Zed would be strong enough to 1v1 Jax. And then we win team fights because Annie's AoE is, is, is insane, frankly. Like... Any drops Tibbers and you win a team fight unless they have something like a Mumu. For sure, and I mean that combos really well with Nami Alt, and if they're grouped up, it buys time to land a perfect bubble. Because right. uh, that's just it with Nami, landing a multi-person bubble is a very tricky thing to do unless the enemy team's already in position. But if, if any flash alts four people that are all grouped up, you know you're landing the bubble, and then you still have alt to follow up and, and chase down, or to disengage. And the best part of that is you have an AoE stun from Annie, you have an, AO, uh, you have an AoE knockup from Nami, and another AoE knockup from Nami, which gives Udyr a lot of time to get in position, which is normally his weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually just going to look up... I'm curious about Trundle's runes and masteries, because I saw the, the bubble shield on him. Oh. Um, the, the runic shield. Yeah, yeah, you're, you you're right. And that's a really interesting... Okay, so he's 921 up. That makes sense, because he's against a range... Oh, no, he's a jungler, actually. Um, I actually always like to run as much offense as possible in the jungle, just because clear speed matters so much. So I'd kind of prefer to see that be 21-9-0, but I also don't jungle Trundle all that much, so I... I, I just want to point out a super interesting thing that just happened. They sent Cinder top. Huh. <laughs> That's actually... I, I guess they really want to not have the, the Jax versus Annie matchup. Yeah. I, and Jax should win versus Ed, should he not? Or at least go even. I think I would think he would go even, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go even versus Jax. Exactly. So I actually really like that decision, because Cinder still has access to blue buff, because they're blue side. There, There is one thing that I don't like about it, and that is that it is... That top lane is very open to kinks from both sides. We actually see Trundle going up there right at level 2... Um, or just invading. Okay, I, I think going top would have been a very smart decision there, because I, I feel you should rarely invade against an Udyr. This fight will not go well for Trundle. I think he they, just showed himself, yeah. If you're going to do that invade, I would go to the bush behind behind the red buff there, so that you can watch him do the, the buff, wait till he gets low, and then you can try and fight. But you're definitely correct, you do not want to fight an early game Udyr in the You need to see range. how much damage he does. Yeah, it's crazy the amount of damage output he can throw down. I also, 
I, I, I agree with you that ganking top would be a good decision, but I really think he wants the Cinderace done. So you need level 2 or level 3 in order to really set up that fight. Right. I, I just don't know if he would have the, the capability of really shutting down Annie with, with nothing but a, a quick Q from Syndra. I was thinking maybe he would at least blow Flash. Um, the other thing that I am kind of confused by, and I'm going to rewind to make sure I'm seeing this right, but it looks like Trumbull only started with two potions and went down a pink ward. Uh, I'm guessing that's his pink ward top. Mm -hmm. now, and Jax two potions... Uh, yeah, I think that matchup is very good for Jax, because the way you beat Jax is either by having an insane early game or by poking. And Zed doesn't really do either. Now, um, and actually, just re-watching that fight, though, Zed followed through his shadows, putting himself in a really dangerous position. I understand that he, he did use his escapes, so he was probably dead, but the decision to bounce back into minions and put yourself closer to Jack's tower yeah. seemed odd. I also, though, don't disagree with Jack's then flashing for the kill. He was already in range, you could have waited for your leap strike to come back up, or still flash and got the kill after, but uh, it just seemed an odd decision the way that was played out. Um... What I was picking on with the potions is you'll see Trundle can clear when he's low, but if Udyr were playing this, you know, the heavy invade style that uh, I think uh, Trick 2G kind of popularized on Udyr, is we already saw what happens when Udyr fights Trundle, and so with Trundle being that low, that's a really dangerous situation for him to be in. Mm -hmm. uh, the early pink ward, though, is, is really nice. I like that a lot, um, even if it has its drawbacks. Yeah, now that being said, Annie is going to notice it and clear really early. Um, I would almost prefer, because as you said, he didn't necessarily want to invade. I might have suggested just throwing it in river. It's going to last longer there. Yeah, any of those small dot bushes is... Um, and so this is sort of what, I'm worried, what I was worried about. Is Udi is going to have a pretty easy gank here. Mm -hmm. He lands the sun, Annie follows up with her sun, and... Yeah, so and we're get the probably going to have to ignite, and you should still get the kill. Yeah, exactly. I like the decision on Annie to stay just long enough to see if she could pick up the kill herself. But as and soon as she saw the ignite go down, she's like, okay, I'm not taking any part of this, and it leaves. In oh. bot lane, though, purple team does get a double kill. I can rewind that. Um, looks like... Caitlyn goes very, very heavy with Ras. Leona jumps in, but not really putting herself in a good position. Beautiful bubble comes out from Nami. Uh, Nami taken super low, but the heal does bounce back on her. In the meantime, Caitlyn, instead of attacking Leona, is just saying, no, I'm taking this kill, I'm going to get it myself, and uh, follows through for the kill on Caitlyn. E then goes across onto Caitlyn so that she can land a slow. Bubble doesn't land, but it doesn't matter. Caitlyn picks up the double kill. That bubble, actually, on Nami is really what turned that fight around, because I feel like Jinx could have had enough damage to burst down... Um, not me, otherwise, with one or two more attacks. Definitely. And then with Get Excited, she'd at least be able to escape, but with a 2v1, probably pick up the kill. Um, the, that early kill is really going to hurt that lane for, um, for Jinx, just because Kayla has the BF now. And there's always this weird thing about playing any carry where you want to stay in lane longer and longer and longer so you can get BF. And it, it creates some point where you miss out on a power spike. So if you can get it early on like that, it really smooths over your lane. Because if you need, if you know, if you get low on health and need to go back, you can do that. You can pick up a Doran's Blade or a, a Pickaxe or whatever. Because you're not saving up anymore. Exactly. Um, yeah, and in Jinx's case, she has the Pickaxe, so that's lovely. She still has enough damage to to fight when it's favorable to her. But at what point is she going to be able to save up 1600 gold in one go? Exactly. Alright, Uder landing again gank into mid here onto Jax. Jax taking a lot of damage. Zed all goes down after the fact, but uh, he's just going to get stunned and walk away. I feel like Trundle could have counter ganked that. It, d it didn't look like he was really... Because mm -hmm. the once the gank started, he had about 5 or 6 seconds to get there, and a nice pillar could have kept Udyr under tower range. Because he kind of overcommitted it. Um... I don't really like the Mandrids on Trundle, because I don't feel that like Trundle is primarily a damage dealer. Mm, he would want to go to oh, another pink board used, and he's just going to get caught out. I like the thought behind this counter jungle, Ooh. but we've already talked about how he can't set these plays up. Like, he can't really duel. So, despite the first gank, that lane swap is really strong for Syndra. The, the weakness Annie has always had, um, because Annie actually used to be a mid laner, like in seasons 1 and 2, and then 
longer ranged mages came out. And there's really no one with, you know, insane long range burst like a Syndra. For sure. As they're down in bot lane, Leona tries to go back in onto Caitlyn. Uh, another really good Nami bubble cancelling out the Jinx. A lot of damage, but not going to be enough here. Um, now, if if I were red side team, I think what I would want to do, or want to have done, is swap Annie and Jax. Because Syndra has nothing but MR right now. And so, you'd have a favorable resistance set, where Zed would be able to go into Syndra, who'd have no armor. That's definitely a good idea, yeah. I think that's always an option whenever you have mixed damage between your top and your mid lane against someone who ends up building uh, resistances. I think that's actually the one of the like hard counters to champions who are who are tanks in the top lane, like Nasus or Shivana or whatever. Uh, this Jax matchup is actually starting to really get out of control. So again, the, the lane swap by by blue team was actually really good because Jax is able to win his lane pretty easily and put a lot of damage down. Uder's been here like three or four times trying to stop that, and then um, you know Singe is also winning her matchup tops. So that just seems like it's putting them both in a very good position. Now what I'm looking for is if either of these mid lanes are going to roam at all. I mean, I, I would say that Zed definitely has the roaming advantage, but he has been put behind. It could be a way for him to get back into the game. Uh, Uter is going a very farm-heavy Trek 2G style, as you mentioned earlier. So what might work better, and it might get countered, but one of the things they might want to consider at least, is trying to have Zed land the ganks and have Uter pick up some of the farm mid in order to, to try and get Zed back into the game. Because as you said, he is going to have to be dealing with a split push late game. Uh, that was a very good response by Sam to that game. Because, as, as mentioned, Udyr is going that magic route, which makes him very squishy. Mm -hmm. And so you actually can't just turn and burst him. I actually... You mentioned that he's going that, that farm-heavy build, but I don't think he's spending enough time farming. He actually only has 10 stacks currently. And that means it's going to be another 10 to 15 minutes before he sees Feral Flare. Uh, and a lot of people who go backwards now, especially on like Rengar or whatever, don't actually turn it into Rengar's just because it takes so long to finish now. Now, the, the gank top lane, it was a little bit sloppy in that there was a lot of flashes wasted from blue side. I, I like the play. I like him roaming out there, I like him just yes, jumping and stunning. idea. But Syndra just flashed in range when all she had to do was take one step forward in Q. I, I just don't, really don't like seeing uh, summoners blown for no reason, really. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, yeah, so actually, if you, if you look at comparison, Trundle is is up three Feral Flare stacks. Not that that's a huge amount, but Trundle's actually a much slower clearer than Udyr. Um, Udyr speeds through the jungle at a ridiculous pace, and Trundle's pretty slow early on. So for Trundle to be ahead in CS is really indicative of how much pressure Udyr's trying to put on lanes, um, both top and mid lane. But unfortunately, the mid lane pressure isn't really paying out, and since he's got so little damage or tankiness, the top lane pressure is just getting him killed. Mm -hmm. Or just the once, but... And so look, I, I think Trundle actually, despite... Me not necessarily liking the call to go farm Trundle is coming out ahead. Now mid lane looks to be sorry Annie, who was top and has now swapped over to mid. Uh, she looks to be going for the Rod of Ages build. Uh, that used <laughs> to definitely be the the core item on Annie. It's what pretty much everyone built. But that being said, I've seen a lot of DFG Annies achieve a lot of success, and that would allow her to try and zero out one of the enemy team, whether it's Jax, Jinx, or Syndra, and she's still going to have the AoE CC. Correct you me if I'm wrong, but once Syndra gets her DFG, she's still going to be able to one-shot Annie, so I, I don't see much reason to be stacking that defense. Exactly. The way I've seen Annie played recently, the Annie player that was mid for my team actually said 
don't give me blues. I'm just going to go in, kill the priority target, and I will probably die before I get other spells off anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure you land the, the AoE stun, zero at a single target, and then you're done. If you get a second combo, great. I also want to critique her skill order. She's gone Q max and then starting to max Molten Shield second. Only one point in W. I generally expect to see W max on, on Annie. Because it does the, the same damage as Q, same range as AOE. Q, but it's AoE. Um, you can see that, that um, purple side team, or sorry, I mean blue and purple are really playing the lane swap game. They keep going back and forth where purple is trying to force Annie versus Jax, but blue team keeps swapping it out. Mm -hmm. Same complaint I've had with every Jinx player in the workshop so far. Uh, she could have gone in with extra auto attacks, and instead she stopped to use that. It's not its not a, a huge issue, because she probably wouldn't have got the kill regardless, but she would have landed a lot of damage. Uh, good bubble coming in in this dive. I, I really don't like seeing early dives in bot lane. Uh, heal goes through, not going to save the <coughs> final tower shot, picks it up. Um, that that, that is actually dive. why I really like the Leona Jinx combo, though, is the combination of the... The stun into the traps means that if you do get ahead, it's really hard to handle that lane. For sure. That being said, that lane, the, sorry, the, the dive there was quite sloppy. Um, she got herself bubbled, which, yes, that sucks. But after that, instead of trying to walk through tower and continue kiting using the, the minigun, she just sort of stood still, took the kill, then started right. moving forward, stopped to heal, and then moved forward again. All she had to do was move between those attacks, and she would have at least lived through the dive, and it would have just gone that much smoother. So I, I was trying to figure out how Zed actually killed Jax, so I rerounded, and it looks like Jax got a little bit over aggressive trying to get a kill there, and took a bunch of tower aggro. I mean, only one shot, but that's the sort of thing that really adds up, especially at these early levels. And this, this Syndra Annie matchup is kind of just out of control at this point. I can see why Blue keeps trying to swap into it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was a little bit over-aggressive to die for the kill there, but... Yeah, if she had taken tower aggro, Annie would have easily picked up the kill, because she just re-engaged, stunned, and then could have walked away. Unfortunately, though, Syndra did not take tower aggro during that, even though she was hitting. I think it was just one of those things where Annie wasn't in tower range. Is, is that not how aggro works? Yes, the, yeah. the, the, both your target and your um, your opponent has to be under tower range, and so... Mm. So I, I understand why it went that way, because Annie couldn't have just face-checked and tanked all that damage. But if she was in any way able to rotate back into tower, she would have been able to pick up that kill thanks to tower yeah. aggro. A lot of things going down on this dragon, and blue team bot side just sort of keeps hovering around it saying, are you guys coming? Are you guys coming? And nothing really comes of it. So I would like to see them on the same page as, as their team. Whether or not they take the dragon, that's up to up to them. But just sort of sitting at that objective, not accomplishing a whole lot. They could have instead been applying pressure bot lane, taking this tower, because Caitlyn was not in that lane. Um, the... I, so... Um... I don't know what I feel again about this Trundle build, but at least he's committed to it. Like, he has the, the magics, and it's pretty much just farming. And so, if you're going to do something, I think you should you should really go all out on it. Uh, and it looks like it's paying off. He's actually able to 1v1 Zed there, and Zed already has a, a Blade of the Ruin King, so that's a pretty solid... Alright, so another compliment for Nami with, uh, she is landing some really nice bubbles, she's landing some good alts. Unfortunately though, it's not doing a whole lot for them. Uh, basically, blue team's just going hyper, hyper aggressive, trying to pick up the kills every chance they can. Nami's canceling it out to the best of her ability, but I honestly think that, um, Caitlyn could be returning a lot more damage, possibly even just placing more traps so it's harder for Leona and, and Jinx's position as they try and land those engages could right. be enough to, to try and get themselves back into this, especially with Uder's help. Right. Um, although it is it is pretty hard for... Well, it, it is a Jinx, so Uder doesn't have too much trouble getting in, but Chompers are very strong against Uder. Um, we actually... Uh, so I, I coach a small team in the Riot Esports department, or did briefly, and so we had this tournament where they were running against a jungler that they knew liked to play Wooter and Skarners, so we just picked Ziggs and Jinx. 
and the combination of the traps and the bombs, like, those sorts of champions makes it really hard for Udyr to function. And so I hesitate to say how much pressure Udyr could really put on Jinx, just because of those traps. For sure. Um, and Pillar as well. Like, those are two strong tools that just make it hard for him to do anything. I also... I don't like the... the Hex tech on... on Jax. Back in bot lane, Leona tries to go in. She actually leads with her alt. I would like to see her landing a guaranteed engage by leading with her E, then following up with alt as necessary. Uh, it does not connect on to anyone. Uder comes in for the counter gank, but so does uh, Trendle here. They're just dueling it out, but at the end of the day, Jinx is going to be taken down, as is Caitlyn. So I didn't actually yeah. see if uh, Trendle got an assist off that or not. Um, either way, though, that goes in Purple Team's favor just because they were so far behind. Trading one for Definitely. one, even excluding the assist, who cares? Uh, that, that's a small way back into the game. And that pretty um, much boils down to that missed alt. Caitlyn got way too far up there. She actually could have been standing farther back to put her damage out. Mm -hmm. Like, if you see where her body is right now, compared with, you know, where Jinx died, she was, like, right next to Jinx. Um, sure. When Caitlyn's range is, you know, 650. And that allowed Trundle to get onto her, and I think that's probably why she went down. So that's just one important skill for Caitlyn, is just to be always as far away as possible from really any melee threats. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that Rod of Ages has been finished by Annie, but we see yeah, even without using the DFG, <laughs> she can 100 to 0 her. And th that's unfortunate for Annie, and I, I do feel a little bit bad for her. But that's why I don't like that build, because it's not actually going to do anything for you. Right. When you're playing the burst versus burst game, you kind of just have to go in on more burst. Exactly. Yeah, if, it, if you're going to try and build defensively or reactively, that's wonderful, and it's a skill that you should be doing. But in this case, you're doing it incorrectly. Uh, trying to build tank versus burst, it's not going to help you. It's not going to allow you to actually duel that person, and it's not going to allow you to, to kill anyone. And furthermore, once team fights happen, it still is going to just mean Cinder has more damage. Exactly. So Jax is coming around in this bot lane, trying to get onto them. Uh, Nami gets stunned up immediately, and uh, lands a bubble. Zed coming in from behind, though. I see what you're meaning about the um, the Leona. She needs to to make sure her ults are more impactful because she keeps leading with them. And if you've just gotten a stun on someone, there's no way they can escape your ultimate. Exactly. You, you could E alt or you could E Q then as it's wearing off alt again. Uh, there, there's a bunch of different ways that you can guarantee it lands, but just leading with the alt, if you're missing it really ever, then stop doing that and lead with something else. I'm actually surprised at how even this game, it, it seems like the map is rotating about itself basically because Syndra keeps pushing in top, but this bot lane is at least slightly in favor of King. Um, as the... He, the blue side team scales into the late game, that's going to be a serious problem, though. Mm -hmm. Because Caitlyn's an early game champion um, versus Jinx, who's just got that extreme late game damage. Cinder's going to get bigger and bigger. Jax is one of the hardest scaling champions in the game. And with so many towers down, it's going to be very easy for them to just push in a wave, take an objective, cycle to a different side of the map, take another objective or tower, and just continue to rotate their way to victory. Normally, I would say what they need to do is rotate a different player into that top lane. But if they rotate their bot lane up there, Caitlyn could just as easily be bursted by Syndra. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have um, a way to deal with Syndra. And Uyr has gone with Randuin's first. So he's also going to die basically as quickly. And so there's not really anyone they can send up there. Um, and that's sort of what I was trying, like, trying to say earlier, is that Uyr needed to camp Syndra. Um, both to get his... You know, his champion fed, but also because uh, I guess he also needed to shut down Jax a little bit. Like, both of those champions are terrifying in split push. Alright, so very split fight there, actually. I'm gonna rewind that and watch in slow mo because there's so many different things going on. Alright, so Nami and Zed come back to tower to try and defend it. Oh, I'm way too early, aren't I? 
Alright, so basically, Leona tries to go in on Twitter, Nami also crosses the ball to Twitter, and Jack, Jack punishes away. Cinder is able to zero out Zed immediately. So basically, Purple Team split up. They used all their CC onto tanks, who were just able to walk away. Cinder was then able to re engage onto Zed, keeping in mind that Caitlyn is in bot lane. So any engage here is going to go in, in Blue Team's favor. So Purple Team not only being split up, but using their disengage, using their CC offensively is a very poor decision when you don't want to fight. So again, the Leona all not connecting onto anyone, so she definitely does need to work on that. Uh, in the meantime, Syndra is just pretty much bursting anyone she damn well pleases, though, and Jinx can just shred these towers. There, there's no stopping this. Uh, with this being down, I would expect it to be in hit, and then they can... Uh, I, I would actually suggest healing and then trying to force a Baron. Because they have the top lane shoved in all the way to inhibitor tower and mid inhibs down. So you have that in entire control over a top, up, a top side jungle. So that would probably be my advice there. Yeah, especially with mid pushing in like that. I am, uh, again, a little bit weird about the builds on this thing. They're winning, but I feel like the Hextech Gunblade doesn't do very much for Jax. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I really like the Cinder's build. Um, there is one change I would make, is actually that on Syndra, because her base burst is so high, Void Staff is better than Rabidon's. Um, every, like, Diamond on Syndra main I know actually just builds straight um, either Athenes into Void Staff or Athenes into GFG into Void Staff. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because you can basically kill anyone with that. Now, it happened a minute or so ago on the replay, but after that retreat, Jinx tried to recall in the enemy jungle and gets herself picked off. Try not to do that. I mean, it, it's excusable. It does happen, but it's not something that should should be happening often, right? If, if you can't guarantee that you're going to be safe there, why risk dying? In the meantime, they do solo dragon over themselves. Uder quite caught out, actually. No, nothing really going to come of it though, as Syndra is busy chasing the carries. Well, that was a nicely landed bubble, putting yourself that close to a Syndra as a support seems questionable. Now we see the Nami all going across, but at the end of the day it doesn't matter as Leona has landed the stun on Zed and Syndra's just able to ult in on top. You see the flash attempted stun, you didn't have your charge up there, Annie, so I don't agree with that. Right. I'll, yeah, you don't flash unless you're landing the immediate combo. Uh, nice timing on the exhaust though to try and cancel out any burst. Uh, Caitlyn now is here, trying to land as much damage as she can. Should be able to get this. Good. You were already in range, I don't see why you would flash forward for it. Um, and the other thing that I, I want to point out is Annie actually caught Jinx a little bit before that fight, right? Got the combo off. And it, it wasn't really enough damage to bring her down. I think if she were, like, because right now she's got Rod of Ages giant stuff. If she had DFG or even, um, I mean, even not a giant spell as her second item, it'd be very easy for her to blow up Jinx and she would still be a threat. Mm -hmm. Whereas right now, she's kind of ignorable. <laughs> so the same issue that we just had with Caitlyn, Jinx went way too close. She walked out past tower as it was being taken down by three people, then backed out, so I'm assuming she wasn't looking at where her character was, and then she stands still and alts the other side of the map, and then just like drops skills instead of auto-attacking or retreating. So she's, right. she's just getting herself killed. I don't know if that was lag or if it was just not watching your character, but regardless of what it was, it was very confusing and I didn't like it. So that, that's definitely something to... You, you know your own reasoning for why that play happened. So so try and avoid that in the future, if possible. Um, on the other hand, it does... Purple did make a little bit of a comeback there. They actually got some good towers. They want a team play. They actually picked up an ace there because blue team was really split up. So I think what blue team needs to do is make sure everyone's been in this situation in a solo queue game where they get ahead and then they don't group. And... Um, so what they really need to make right now is group, get the inhibitor down again, and make a play, like you said, probably on Baron from there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, with, with the inhibitor being back up, it's a little harder to shove, but your your Jinx has a lot of... Well, actually, she's not that far, but I thought she was much further ahead than she was. That's impressive that Caitlyn has come back this much. Uh, that being said, though, she still has to go back. <laughs> Sorry? She's been, she's been out here way too long. Um, she kept backing off and then 
going back to farm minions, and if Jax had been just a little bit faster, she'd be dead. Alright, so we see Annie trying to go in, does not have any charges up. You need to prime your charge as Annie. Either keep it one charge below stun or at stun, so that you can initiate a fight as soon as your team's in range. I think it is... They don't have a Morgana, so it's not really relevant, but it's typically better to keep it... If they have a Morgana, one below stun, mm -hmm. what you can do is you can toss out your Q, and if they black shield, you hit your E while the projectile's midair and you get the stun. Exactly. If they don't black shield, but since there's no Morgana, she should be keeping it really on stun. Another missed off from Leona. I, I don't know what's going on with that, but it's not a difficult skill to land. I, I would really, really be working on that. I think it's going a little closer, Ooh. gets caught out by Annie. Annie actually misses her combo. So that was a little bit sloppy. Jax should be able to take her down. Jinx all comes across, gets them all very, very low. Jax is... yeah, he's a little too low to jump back in on that. I mean, the story of that fight is Leona's ult was down and she wasn't there. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, that's just overconfidence. Uh, if... I don't think it's necessarily a mechanics thing about missing ults, I think it's just about waiting for the right opportunity to engage. Mm -hmm. Because obviously from a mechanical perspective, it's just as easy to hit skill shots as it is to dodge them. And, um, you know, people are going to get good at, at dodging and baiting out skill shots. But there are certain times where you can initiate a team fight, and really it's impossible to dodge because if you do, you give up your positioning in a team fight, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you need to wait for them to put themselves in a bad position and then engage. Whether that's planting themselves right next to a wall or tower, so it limits their their options for mobility. Unless they flash, they're probably going to get hit. Cinder's uh, not here, um, and neither is Jack. So I really want to see Purple Team force an advantage right now. Definitely. Now, Nami Alt isn't quite up, so they don't have that option to engage. Uh, they're they're pretty reliant on the Annie engage, and she wasn't quite there yet. Her flash is going to be up in 15 seconds. Uh, unfortunately, by that time, I would expect Blue Team to be able to group. In the meantime, though, Zed does go on to Jinx, lands the Alt, not able to land any other follow-up damage, though. Jinx Alt not quite blocked, uh, but they're, they're pretty much just going to walk away. Um, can I answer a question from chat? Go for it. Somebody is, is commenting on Evelyn. I just wanted to point out that the way you beat Evelyn is not actually with an abundance of pink wards, but putting green wards near her camps, like wraiths and uh, wolves in particular. You'll see her when she's doing those camps. You'll see which direction she leaves from those camps, and that way you know where she can gank next. Pink wards don't actually do all that much because she's just going to walk across them and kill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're slightly more valuable than in a standard matchup. Oh yeah, you can't I don't rely on them. Pink words are bad. I just mean like the way you beat a, a, a good jungle oven is pretty simple. You wore up her camps. You know where she's going to be. I, I just want to chuckle a little bit. They have four wards on Baron. Yes. And on the plus side, it'll take a really long time to for either team to. <laughs> well, yeah, Leona sweepered half the 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 Baron itself. It cleared out some wards, and there was still two left. Um, I, I actually think a very smart thing to do is to pink ward something and green ward it. Because most people, if they see a pink ward, will kill the pink ward and won't think, I'd better also sweep here for a green ward. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I think this is exactly what blue team should be doing, grouping up and pushing. I, I, I would still see it as very hard for... Oh, Leona. Same thing. There's four people grouped, but all kills to no one. We need time uh... It goes way too deep, gets altered, and it's done very, very quickly. It doesn't really matter because Annie isn't there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter in this case, but... But, yeah. There's just so many reasonably large misplays in this fight that it, it makes me a little bit sad. And the Jinx ult does connect to take down Caitlyn. Yeah, Annie being their only real initiate here, she needs to be with her team. She cannot go split push, and as you said earlier, Zed should be the one trying to do that. If you have to go away, just pass it through. Um, the, also, the, the follow-up to that is, I feel like people have this idea of, oh man, my team shouldn't have gotten caught when they're split pushing. Mm -hmm. That's easier said than done. Because if you're looking at, say, a Leona, Leona can initiate from, what, 1300 range away? Yeah, around that. Um, 
Malphite has a pretty similar thing. You know, any of those champions with long range engages, even a, 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 a Jinx Zap can start a team fight, and the range on that is ridiculous. And so, if you're away from your team and they get caught, yes, they should have been playing safer, but there's only so much playing safe can do. You can't just assume that the other team is going to fail at initiating. Exactly. Unless you have, uh, I'm trying to think of examples here, like a, a Janna, a, a Nivea, not that a Nivea is even that common, but unless you have someone who just said, or a Ziggs, oh, Ziggs, Ziggs, Ziggs is the great example, of where it's very difficult for them to push in, their only real option is to tower dive you, Right. then blaming your team for getting caught, unless you have those champions, is a very selfish and uh, incorrect uh, insult to try and throw at them. Alright, right. so do you want to go over final builds here? I know we had mentioned uh, a couple times that we really didn't like the Gunblade on Jax, and I completely agree with that. He actually didn't finish up his Triforce either. So that would then imply that he's going three offensive items before any defenses. Right, and against, against any amount of damage, like if Annie had gone more pure damage, she would just immediately explode Jax. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the one big thing for me, is that Annie's and Jax's builds just both seem... Like, I don't know what they're... Okay, I, I don't want to say that they're bad, because that that's not really a descriptive claim. What I mean to say is that I don't know what their advantage is. If you're doing a build, it should have an advantage over some other build. And I, I don't know what you really gain from having Hextech. I think they're going for the burst and dueling potential. But if you look at the enemy team, who are you dueling? Zed and Udyr are really the only ones who you're going to have to deal with. Or Annie, who's built defense tanky utility for some reason. So, it's not as though you're lacking in damage in the build, it's not as though you're lacking sustain in the build, it's not as though you're lacking dueling ability in the build, if you cut that out. Exactly. If you, if you cut that out and get Trinity Force instead, you still have dueling ability, you still have burst. Um, but what you do have is more tankiness, because you're, you're building a, a, a defensive item third. Exactly. Um... Jinx's build is pretty solid. I feel like that's what you should build on most AD carries at this point. Syndra's build obviously worked pretty well. I would I would get the Void Staff earlier, as I said. Um, and there are a lot of guides up about Syndra that will explain why that can, can do so much better than I can. But basically, it's just more damage against everyone. Leona's build seems pretty standard to me, I don't know. Um, and Trundle's build, again, kind of like Jax's, seems a little damage heavy to me. I don't really like the Feral Flare into Bork build, because you get tanky pretty late. Um, however, it didn't really matter because the other team didn't have a burst threat to follow up on simply because Annie was building the two health AP items. Um, and even Zed was building pretty damage light with the upgraded Hex Shrinker. Um, yeah, now before we move on to the other team, I would like to point out that we had some concerns with Jinx's farming ability. She did really, really well in lane and then just sort of never farmed after that. She did, right near the end of the game, picked up a lot of CS, so it doesn't look nearly as bad now in the post-game. Right. But her right. build She's is very incomplete years. for how well the lane was going for her. Right, and, and, and Caitlyn did a good job, I think, of just split farming. Not that she not not that she didn't make mistakes in doing so, but I think your, your default state should be... I, I kind of feel it, it's like StarCraft. You want to drone up, and then when an army comes and kills you, you say, oh man, how could I have not died to that army? So in, in LoL, I think what you want to do is you want to farm up, and if someone ganks, you say, oh, crap. Or if someone takes tower, you say, oops, how do I not have them take that tower or that dragon? But the, the default assumption should sort of be, be farming all the time. If something bad happens, figure out how you can not have that bad thing happen next game. Mm -hmm. uh, just because farm does so much for you. You can see that Caitlyn, despite being on the losing team, is actually even in gold with Jinx. Mm -hmm. uh, 100 behind. <laughs> now, are there any other comments on builds overall? Um, I, obviously, we mentioned Annie a bunch of times. You play support more than I do. I don't actually know if people still build Mikhail's on, on Nami. Every game. Okay. Like, that's... Crucible's still pretty much built on everyone. It's so much more expensive than it used to be, and it's really annoying to try and fit into your builds. But, but... it's still the best option. Well, okay, because your other options are Locket. Locket's a great item. You pretty much always build it if you're versus an AoE or a magic damage team, especially ones that require resets, right? Uh, so Locket's amazing. But you still generally want a Crucible. Now, the order in which you build your items, Crucible is built, 
based on how many uh, CC threats the enemy team has. So in this case... All, it's just Leona, really. Leona, Syndra stun, Jack stun, Jinx uh, traps. I guess I guess the way I would see it is if you get hit by Syndra's stun as an you're AD carry, you're probably... like the, the heal will come through, the CC will go away, but those seven orbs will still be chasing you. Oh, for sure, yes. And um, in, in this case... It's good just to pick up versus Leona because you gotta keep whoever it is alive, whether it's Caitlyn, whether it's Jinx, right. uh, okay. sorry, whether it's Caitlyn, Zinx, or Z bleh, Zed, or Annie. I cannot speak today. Um, there, there's three high priority damage threats when built properly that you might need to, to remove CC so they can initiate their combo. Or in Caitlyn's case, to reposition and continue poking down damage. So I'm, I'm fine with the Crucible idea. And it's not as though I really see too many other options. Locket wouldn't right. make a whole lot of sense here as a because rush item. Because they don't have a ton of magic damage, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that the, the Crucible is a fine decision. But generally, keep in mind two things with Crucible. As you said, if, if you're CC'd and you're going to die anyways, Crucible's not countering that. If they are champions that have suppression, Crucible does not work on suppression. I have Thank been God reported <laughs> and raged at and flamed so much because I didn't rush a Crucible versus a Warwick. People still run Cleanse sometimes versus me at Scar. It's great. Yeah. And, and it's just like, no, it does not work versus that. And they're going, fucking no, report, scrub. And it's just like, no, 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 read the item. It does not remove uh, any sort of, uh, of uh, a sustained engage like that, whether it's Mal's, Warwick, Skarner, as you mentioned. It does not work versus those. So the big one for me is Morgana Bindings, Fiddle Fears... Anything that's like super, super uh, Ramus taunts, not that he's played often. Anything that's a super long duration, single target CC, Crucible is amazing versus. Run it every game, rush it as right. fast as you can get it, and it's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I agree, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> make sure I, was, I, I was, play that line. I was looking at boots, actually, because I, I, I suddenly realized that there's mobility boots on Zeta. And I feel like you get mobility boots because you're ahead, you want to roam, you want to make plays. And that never happened. So it seems like that purchase is a little bit odd. Whereas if you had something like Merc Treads, Cinder wouldn't be able to blow you up as quickly. Or if you had Ninja Tabi, you could fight better against Jax and Udyr, you know. Bo mm -hmm. Both of those things seem like they would do more. Um, and for the same reason, I don't really like the, the boots of swiftness on Udyr. I do feel that there is a place for boots of mobility and, and swiftness boots, but I don't think this was the place. It was good for Leona, because she's the type of champion that just wants to get in there and make a pick for her team or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, now, I'm trying to even remember situations where swiftness is really a good option on junglers. And in this case, what slows are you dealing with? Okay, Jinx is out. Oh, and a missed right. Leona alt. Those are the only... Exactly. Oh, sorry, I, I apologize. Cinder has her W, but if she's landed that, she's probably landed her stun. Exactly. It's... And Trendle Pillar. So there, there's no high-potency slows that you're trying to remove or, or reduce. Um, at, at Zertus, I think on Jinx, what you really want to do is go Infinity Edge and then a Zeal item. Just yep. because that'll give you the mobility you need to kite around in team fights. After that, you can go with either Bloodthirster or Last Whisper, depending on how much armor the enemy team has. Um, and then really whatever you want. The, the reason Runons isn't that solid is because the range on it is relatively low, and it doesn't stack with your AP, or your AoE, it just gives you, or rather it doesn't synergize with your AP, it just gives you more AoE. Um, but you never, like, the number of situations where people are standing in the small area that Runons hits is pretty small. For sure. Okay guys, so we are starting up the